The following program is shot in 4K high dynamic range and broadcast in high definition from Capital Broadcasting Company. Gifted. Curious. Professional. Determined. Intelligent. Steady. Giving. Warm. Loving. Elegant. Caring. 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 Resourceful. Compassionate. 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 Lovable. <laughs> That's kind. Beautiful. Extraordinary. Impactful. When I started reading about Mary Ann Black, I was amazed at all she had done. But her life and work are more than a bullet point list of jobs, accomplishments, and awards. They're really about the positive impact her life and work have had on others. Wag butter. Wag butter? Okay, so we're going to want 75 single jar boxes. Vantrell Holman works in the packing and shipping area at Big Spoon Roasters in Durham. It's a maker of nut butters and snack bars. I do boxes, label the boxes, and put jars inside the boxes. Do you want to make some more two packs? Vantrell likes being part of the team. I like working with other people. And he likes the benefits. They pay good money. Holman is a graduate of a program called Project Search. And Marianne actually is the one who brought that idea to the forefront. Project Search helps high school seniors in Durham Public Schools who have developmental disabilities. They come into the classroom every day, do a little bit of instruction, and then most of their time is out learning real job skills uh, in our environment in the hospital. More than half of Project Search's graduates find employment after high school. Holman is one of them. We were really impressed with Project Search when we first contacted them, and I know they have a mission of helping instill self-reliance and achievement in members of the community that have barriers to employment, and those really reflect our values. It really has helped him to, to bring incredible value to us and also for him to feel great about what he does. Feels good. Project Search is housed at the City of Medicine Academy on the campus of Duke Regional Hospital. Mary Ann was really instrumental in bringing it to our campus and having City of Medicine Academy get its own building. And she drew on her uh, skills in bringing people together, but it also reflected her vision uh, for how uh, it could be impactful today, but endure for a long, long period of time. So it stands as a symbol in so many ways of, of who Marianne was and what she brought. So what is the primary responsibility for the small intestine? The academy is its own high school within Durham Public Schools. It serves 400 students a year, preparing them for careers in healthcare. Many of them go on to medical school, uh, some to nursing school. And many get scholarships to do that. It is a very highly regarded program. Perhaps Mary Ann Black's commitment to health care is best reflected in a program called Project Access. It helps uninsured patients who use Durham's Lincoln Community Health Center and don't have access to specialty care. So the reason he's here today is for a follow-up weight check, right? Okay. Project Access is a way for donated specialty care to be coordinated with the providers at Lincoln to get people the care that they need. This can sometimes mean that they don't have to keep being seen over and over again in primary care, but they actually go to a specialist to get something fixed if possible. Now we're gonna get a temperature. Project Access provides specialty care to more than 2,000 patients a year. It's just a, a great program, and Marianne was so essential in making that program happen. Project Access, the City of Medicine Academy, and Project Search, and all of the people those programs have helped are testaments to who Marianne Black truly was. Marianne was someone who was very kind, uh, 
very compassionate, really cared very deeply about this community. She cared deeply about people, about children in particular. She knew how to handle bureaucracy, but she knew that things to be done for the community had to be done with the support of the people. She valued community voice as much as she did the voice of people in the power and decision-making towers. And she wanted those two groups to get together because she knew together Durham can do all sorts of great things. Next, a look at the life that made Marianne Black who she was. I want you to know that my parents have done everything that they could do to take care of their children and to make sure that we received a good education. There were many years when I questioned what was wrong with me and why I was treated differently. I grew up in the segregated South, a place that did not allow Negroes to become all that we could become. Marianne Black grew up in this house in Florence, South Carolina in the 40s and 50s. You used to have to walk to high school. The white kids rode by us. They throwed bottles of water on us. They spit on us. But Mary Ann's parents still tried to make a good life for their children. When we was growing up, we didn't have a whole lot of money. But what we did have, we made the best use of it. Our parents always taught us to do the best we could. We had to cook, we had to wash, we had to iron. Mary Ann did most of the cooking. She was making upside down cakes before we ever heard of upside down cake. Their father was Florence's first African American police officer, something that frightened Marianne and her siblings. The fear was that somebody would kill him. But it sent another message to Marianne. She knew that things could get better, and she did what she could to help things to make things better. Mary Ann graduated from Wilson High School in Florence. She earned a bachelor's degree at Benedict College in Columbia, South Carolina, and then went on to earn a master's degree in social work at UNC Chapel Hill. She wanted to help people, and that was why she wanted to, to become a social worker. I came to Duke in 1974 and worked as a social worker at the Child Guidance Clinic. I was already trained as a social worker, but being with the psychologist and the psychiatrist and all of the other people there really enhanced my learning and expanded my ability to do other things in the world. Mary Ann developed a more holistic approach to treating children with behavioral and emotional problems and developed a mentoring program for them as well. In 1984, she started her own psychotherapy practice. My practice filled up very, very rapidly. And there were many, many people at Duke who referred, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, who referred patients to me because they knew my skill level and did not feel uncomfortable sending patients to me. She would later be named both state and national social worker of the year. In 1990, Mary Ann successfully ran for the Durham County Board of Commissioners. She served 12 years, the last six as chair. Very caring person, which certainly came through all the time. Her social work background was always on display. So she cared about how people were feeling and generally was a very compassionate person. I enjoyed being a county commissioner because of all of the learning that you had an opportunity to do and the opportunity to make changes. Early in her tenure, Mary Ann dealt with one of the most controversial issues county commissioners would ever face, the merging of the city and county school systems. That was fraught with all kinds of emotion and bitterness almost in the community, uh, particularly among county residents. Mary Ann helped unify a divided board. She liked to see both sides of an issue 
and she always wanted to get the other person's thoughts also before coming to a decision herself. That approach served her well in another contentious issue before the board, the lease of Durham Regional Hospital to Duke University Health System. There were people who were strongly opposed to having Duke be the partner for Durham Regional. Marianne Black was an incredibly trusted voice, a steady voice, non-partial. Uh, she got deeply involved in trying to understand the, the benefits or uh, potentially the, uh, uh, the lack of benefits of different partners. Ultimately came to the conclusion that Duke was the right partner. And Marianne really saw that and, and had the, the foresight to, to, to understand that there would be benefit to this community to having Duke Health System um, and then Durham Regional Hospital partner together. In 2002, Dr. Ralph Snyderman, president and CEO of Duke University Health System, recruited Mary Ann to be his director of community affairs. He later elevated her to associate vice president of community relations. I knew her. I knew her because I negotiated against her. She was a tough person to negotiate against. And one of the reasons she was so tough is she was so nice. She was so sincere. Uh, she deeply believed in what she was doing. Uh, she was representing the people of Durham. She was unswerving. She was the person that ensured that we kept community health and our community partners on the agenda at the highest level of the organization. She was the person who led uh, the establishment and creation of new endeavors or projects. She was the person who helped us uh, be accountable. At the time, Duke's goal was to go beyond just treating illness and disease at its medical center and work more on promoting better health out in the community. And we decided to do this, we needed to bring in all the constituencies that were involved. And that's where the idea of the summit came up uh, and Marianne Black, uh, from my perspective, was the one who was the point person for that. In fact, Marianne started a series of health summits in the community. She had the people at Duke that, you know, have the money and the power come sit at the table with community organizations and just community uh, residents so that the voices could be shared. Only she and her team could get that done. And we began to talk about what would it take for us to begin to say what are the health issues we should tackle. In many ways, this is a legacy of Mary Ann Black, bringing all the constituencies together to work to improve health as well as to care for people with disease. The sort of the basis for social work is don't do for others what they can do for themselves, but help them move along in what they want to do. And she sort of applied that to the community. Mary Ann helped forge a partnership between Duke and Lincoln Park Community Health Center that led to the creation of the Lion Park Clinic in South Central Durham. And it served those who have lack of funds, no funds, no insurance, a sliding scale. People who would normally have to go to the emergency room can come here. The clinic will soon bear Mary Ann's name. She was a defender of our dream. In 2017, the local Democratic Party nominated Mary Ann to fill a vacated seat in the North Carolina House of Representatives. Governor Roy Cooper appointed her and I think it was a no-brainer. And she's been front and center of all the issues in Durham for the last 30 years and, and then became front and center with all the state issues. In the legislature, Mary Ann continued to work on issues related to health and education, particularly as they related to children. In the House of Representatives, before she spoke, she always was careful with her words, wrote out everything, delivered uh, statements impeccably, but she had a, a real care for everyone. She wasn't representing one constituency. She, she wanted the good for all. As an African-American woman, I think she was just brave. And she lived through times where she had to find her voice when it probably wasn't easy as a woman or as a black woman to have that voice. She was just the most warm, gracious person you'd ever meet. Her warmth and her listening ability 
brought people together. She worked with people at the house across the aisle better than I did. Which led to some advice from Marianne to her new legislative colleague and friend. Well, Marsha, you have a lot of passion, but don't forget your grace when you speak on the floor. <laughs> it was good motherly advice. Next, the wonderful legacy Marianne Black left us. I like to spend the time trying to seek solutions to life problems, enjoying life, enjoying my family, enjoying friends, and yes, my job. I have always loved the jobs that I have. To watch the WRAL documentary, Mary Ann, on demand anytime, go to WRALdocumentary.com and all of these streaming platforms. You can also join the conversation by following WRAL Doc on Facebook and Twitter. My goal is to leave this world a better place. So there is no time for me to be angry. There is no time for me to feel self-pity. Marianne Black spent the last months of her life battling cancer. Marianne was a strong person. And Marianne did all that she could to um, help in her illness. My wife and I, we went to Durham many occasions to see her and we visited her and we did everything we could to help her. My sister wanted to live. She loved life. And she did everything that she could to live. But on March 25th, 2020, Mary Ann lost her battle to cancer. Among her surviving family is her son, Jonathan, who, like his mother, is a social worker. She cared a great deal about me and my well-being. Um, she was a uh, you know, loving mother. She loved me, um, unconditional love. And she was, she was a great friend and a mentor as well. Her passing was, was tough. She's a very good friend. I really miss her. Her, her death when it came um, may have been expected, but it was still a shock. Every time I look at her desk while I sit on the floor, I miss her terribly. Mary Ann's death came during the pandemic, so there could be no large funeral gathering. That was one of the saddest mornings I've ever experienced. There would have been hundreds, if not thousands of people coming to her memorial, honoring her, talk stories about her and, and the love she gave to us and we wanted to give back. And to have such a kind of a cold gray morning um, with so few people there, it, it was really hard. The pandemic was also a reminder of Mary Ann's value to the community. Sometimes you need to touchstone. Somebody that's been around for a while, that knows the game, that knows how to get things done, that cares. And she was that in many ways for a lot of people in Durham. Marianne not being here as a touchstone is, is hard for many of us because we have we relied on her to be a leader in times like this. The quintessential public servant, an amazing individual. I admired her. She was a good person in her own quiet way. You couldn't help but feel her strength. Marion was a very warm person. She was uh, always looking out for others in the best way she could. For Marianne, it was all about other people. It was not about Marianne, it was about other people. People like Vantrell Holman, who never even knew Marianne, but is benefiting from her work on Project Search. It found him a job opportunity he might not have otherwise had. He's contributing to help his household, um, and that's, I, I would imagine, I hope, that's something that really makes him feel good. I'm helpful, feels good. That is part of the legacy of Mary Ann Black, a life devoted to helping others, even those she'd never met, with an impact that spans across a community and a state through generations to come. Everyone has dignity, 
and um, everyone deserves kindness. And Marianne certainly led by that example, and I think she has really shown us that that's the way for us to continue her legacy. It's a legacy of caring not just for Durham, but of caring for North Carolina. Marianne Black's legacy will be one of a heartfelt person for community and meeting community needs. Relying on um, the community voice and making sure that the individuals experiencing problems are the ones who are helping create the solutions. And that is her social work degree and that is really the legacy she, that she left. Her legacy will be a lady who stood for truth conviction, a willingness to help, a willingness to be a problem solver.